Batman slowly turned over and he saw his arch villain or arch nemesis, the Joker. Hey, sorry, James from Ingved, just uh, reading about the Batman. And Batman is famous for having his utility belt and tools to solve crimes. I'm going to use this shoe to teach you some vocabulary and some idioms. Are you guys ready? Or some phrases. You ready? Let's go. Use the shoe. <laughs> All right, so Mr. E says, I'm a shoe in for this job. What the heck does it mean? He's actually wearing a nice pair of shoes, so it must be something serious. Let's go to the board and find out. Hmm. <laughs> Here is a shoe. And you may notice in brown, I have put one, two, three, four things about a shoe you may not know. I know you know what a shoe is, right? Basically. But did you know that these things here, we call them laces? Yeah, that's what you tie up. Someone will say, do up your laces. But there's also an idiom that comes from this. Now, what do you call the back of the shoe? You call that the heel, right? The heel of the shoe. Now, this part you can't really see, but it's the part that bends like this. We call that the arch. It's where your foot kind of goes like this. And then finally, this is the soul. No, I'm not talking about the soul that goes to heaven, right? I'm not talking about the soul that goes to heaven. I'm talking about the soul of your foot. So it's heel, arch, which is the middle part, and then the sole. And we've got our laces. And now we're ready to do our lesson. Let's go. So let's start with the shoe itself. The whole shoe and nothing but the shoe. The first one I want to talk to you is about a goody two-shoes. Now, if you're a goody two-shoes, it means you're a good, good person. You know, the person does all their homework, comes on time, is very nice to everybody. Uh, you might be religious even. I don't know. But you're a really, really, really good person. You don't smoke. You don't drink. I know. If you're a uh, Ingvid watcher, that's not you, okay? Because you're on the internet, so I don't know what you're up to. But a goody two-shoes only does good things, never does bad things. No bad words, no alcohol, no anything that's bad. Goody two-shoes are usually children, okay? The next one I want to talk about with the shoe is a shoe-in. And notice I said shoe-in. It looks like the word shoe here, but it's spelled differently, which might be a bit confusing. Well, that's because when we as English people say it, we don't really think of this particular verb but we use the word. And when we use it, we mean if someone's a shoe in and usually for a job or a situation, he's a shoe in for to be her girl, uh, boyfriend. He, she is a shoe in for the job. When we say it, what we mean is they're the perfect candidate or the perfect person to get it. Okay. So if you're going for a job and let's say uh, you're a lady and you're going for a job, she's a shoe in for the job. She's got the right education. She has the right connections. She has the right experience. We mean you're the perfect one for the job. Now, remember I said it looks like this, but it's not like that. I've got to give you the real meaning behind it. See, this shoe-in comes from horse racing. You know horses? Well, way back, what would happen is horses would be racing. And then one horse was, that was winning would kind of go back and fall back, and the second horse would win, and it would become the winner. And it was called the shoe-in. Well, why, you're thinking? That's like perfect candidate, right? Not exactly. This is in what we call the fixed race. It means that the first person in the race, so let me get you some markers so you can see the difference. This horse was winning, but it was cheating. Then it would stop and slow down to let the other horse win. That way, people would make money on this horse. Boo! Bah! Yes, but this would still get the job and win. So over time, we took the idea from horse racing, shoe in, the person who would win, and then we'd say, whoever gets the job or the girl or whatever is a shoe in because they were guaranteed to, to get win. Just like this one would let it win, that's where shoe in comes from. Yeah, sometimes it's better not to know the history of things. But now you can press your, impress your friends because when they say, you're a shoo-in, you can say, <clears throat> do you know what shoo-in and where it comes from and what it really means? <laughs> Are you trying to say I'm cheating for this job? All right, see there. It's nice to know. Okay, so that's shoo-in. But it will be pronounced like this. 
And in modern times, if someone says you're a shoe in for this job, what they're trying to tell you is, hey, it's yours. You've got everything that is necessary to get it. Cool? All right. Next, let's move to the laces. Remember the laces? These funny things, laces. Sometimes they look like string, all right? So sometimes we say string, different laces look different. These ones are laces. If they're really, really tiny and look like string, you might call them shoe string. Similar, but now you know. So let's go and look at these. Now I've got a couple. When it looks like a string, we say shoe string budget. What's a shoe string budget? Well, a string is really, 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 really small and fine. Uh, oh, you know what? This is like a string. See how small this is? This could be like a shoe string. Hopefully you can see that. If you can see that, it's so small, it means there's nothing to it. There's not very much. There's nothing much to it. So when we say you're in a shoestring budget, it means you don't have a lot of money, right? You want to go shopping, but you only have, if you're in America, $10, America or Canada, you have $5. You can't buy very much with it. So you go, I'm on a shoestring budget. Or if you wanted to go to a movie or you wanted to go on vacation, you say, I have $300. Well, that's a shoestring budget, not very much. So I have to be careful with my money. How about laces? Well, when I showed you the lace, which is different, if somebody laces into you, it means boom, like attacked you. What? Yeah, man, I was walking down the street and I saw this one guy lace into another guy. Boom, boom, boom. It means hit him, hit him, hit him hard. Lace into means attack. So if somebody laced into me, for instance, the boss laced into me about my project, it means attacked in a negative way. We might have said, that wasn't good. This wasn't good. I don't know why you did this. Ba, 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 ba. Lace into somebody. Okay? So the boss laced into him. Lace up. That's a funny one. See my shoes? Lace them up means put the laces in the shoes. And if you lace them up, then lace them up and tie them. You usually hear this one more in boxing. When they say to lace up the gloves, it means put these things in the gloves <coughs> and then tie it so you can fight. Sometimes your trainer has to lace up your gloves. Okay, so now we've done shoe and lace. Let's go to the bottom of the foot, the sole of the foot. That's the bottom, the sole of the foot. In this case, sole is one big thing. In the church, they talk about the soul, and the soul is the part, you. It's essentially you, one thing. And when we talk about the soul of a shoe, we mean it's one thing. So soul, in this case, means one thing. Soul purpose means it only has one, one job it can do. Your sole purpose here is to make me happy. That means your only job here is to make me happy. Mr. E is the sole authority on cameras. It means Mr. E is the only one who knows about cameras. Not the only one, it knows the most and can tell everybody about it. So if you're the sole authority, you're numero uno. You're the one person that everybody goes to because everybody knows you know, you're the authority. Sole survivor. Ooh, this is not a good one. But if an airplane crashes somewhere, what that means if you're the sole survivor, everybody died but you. You're the only one alive. If you work in a company and they fire, they get ready, you're fired. Uh, okay, you're fired, you're fired. Does that remind you of anybody? You're fired and she's fired, right? Like on The Apprentice and you're the sole survivor, you're the only one left after everyone's fired. Okay, now do you remember the arch? We talked about the arch. Now I want to talk to you about the arch because the arch or arc, some people will say, the arch is in a structure. They found this in Rome, that if you put a little kind of half circle, it can support a lot of weight. So they have an arch support in your shoe so you can stand and be strong, okay? It's usually inside the shoe. You'll notice this word arch is in architecture, which is in buildings, because they take the idea of arch, support, which is design, and they put it in architecture, right? Cool, right? So it's design, design. Now, I put arch villain here, and when I did that, I put two of these things to explain to you. Arch also means mischievous or cunning, which could be very bad. A cunning person is a clever or a smart person, but in not a nice way. 
and mischievous means someone who acts in a little bit of a bad way, right? So if you put mischievous and bad with arch, and there's another meaning which means chief or first, when you get something like the word arch villain, Batman's arch villain is the Joker. He's his first villain, number one villain, and he is smart and he is bad. Arch villain. You'll see arch before a lot of things for that very reason, because they're either trying to tell you it's first or it's bad. Now, you can also talk about arch as being old, right? But that's another thing we'll go into another time. But here I want to show you this one. Arch is first and chief, and that's where we have monarch. A monarch is a king or a queen, mono meaning one, and arch meaning first. So one leader, monarch. Cool, huh? Now you're learning about history as well as vocabulary. And finally, I want to touch on the back part of the shoe, the heel. That's the back part of your foot as well, right? So the arch is part of your foot as well as a shoe, and the heel is the back part of your foot. Achilles heel. That's right around here. An Achilles heel is a weakness. If you have an Achilles wheel, heel, it's something that makes you weak. Uh, example. Mm. My Achilles heel is chocolate. Anybody who knows me knows I love chocolate. Um. <laughs> I told you, anybody who knows me, see that came from nowhere like magic. I love chocolate. Sorry. Uh, that's my Achilles heel. Bring someone to heal. If you've ever had a dog, when you say to the dog, here boy, here, come here, stay, sit. The dog does what you say it does. If someone says we need to bring Mr. Heal, Mr. E to heal, it means Mr. E is doing whatever he wants to do, and we're gonna say, stop it. You must listen to me, you must obey me. So if a wife says I need to bring my husband to heal, it means husband, here, now, sit, roll over, play dead. <laughs> Or it could be the reverse, I don't know. But to bring someone to heal means they are out of control and you need to control them. So let's talk about the last one, heels. Heels are shoes that make people appear taller. Usually they're worn by women. Guys, don't say you wear heels, you're not a woman, just for women. In fact, you know what I'm talking about? Because heels look like this, right? And guys, you know you don't wear shoes like that, right? Those are women, oh. Another Achilles heel, besides the fact I love chocolate, is I made a spelling mistake. Sometimes I make many spelling mistakes, but this time I caught it. I'm going to change the A here because Achilles heel comes from a Greek myth about a, a, a person who couldn't be killed and their heel was a point that could be killed on. That's why it's called Achilles heel. So this is actually his name. It's the Achilles tendon, but we use his name to describe this area. And also, this is possessive. So it's Achilles heel, because we don't really like it. Not all the time in English do people go Achilles is his heel, and they drop that and just put it there. So it goes Achilles heel. Cool? All right. Sorry about that, guys. I made a break there. But hey, you've got Achilles heel twice. James has two weaknesses. You can send me chocolate and all your spelling mistakes. <laughs> all right. So we've got that. We've done architect, and as you know, this is never the end of the lesson. We've got a quiz, a bonus, and something else coming up. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so we worked on our shoe, so let's see if we remember our idioms and our vocab. But before we do that, I've got a bonus for you. In the bonus section, there'll be one, two, three other things that have to do with shoes. Now, these aren't exactly shoes, but they are things we do with shoes. Number one, laced with. When something is laced with something else, we add to it, and it's usually actually drugs or alcohol. So if you're drinking a coffee and you're like, oof, this is laced with something, it's probably going to be alcohol, like a blueberry tea or a Long Island iced tea, where we say it's laced, someone has added alcohol. In a more negative way of thinking, if something's laced with drugs, maybe um, you're out with a friend and they're talking about business and they don't like that you don't agree with them and you want to do something, you come back, you go to the washroom, you come back, you start eating some more food and you're starting, oh, my head, the room is spitting. And you go, oh, you laced with drugs. 
They laced it with drugs. They put drugs in the food to make you tired or sick. Um, okay, so laced with is usually either going to be drugs or alcohol and usually have a negative meaning, not a good meaning. Stepping out in style. Well, what do you do? Well, when you take, when you're in your shoes, you step, right? You take steps. So I know it's not exactly a shoe, but rarely do we go outside of our house with no, without wearing shoes, right? Without footwear. So we have to say stepping out of style, we're talking about a shoe, and it means you look good. If you're stepping out of style, probably you have some new shoes, some new, another word is kicks, some new kicks or you're wearing a suit and we say, hey, you're stepping out in style, you're leaving your house looking good. Cool. It means to leave. You can think of leaving and looking good. And finally, step-by-step -step guide. I know I wrote a guide, but I didn't have much room, so I wanted to uh, explain. A step-by-step -step guide means it will be a book or a manual or an individual, a person, will explain everything you have to do in order so first you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this. You get what I'm saying. It tells you every single thing you have to do in the order you have to do it to make sure you don't forget or miss anything. Cool? So that's what a step-by-step -step guide does. So when I put a guide, it's a guide and I could put with, that's got everything, everything in it, okay? Even something as like as simple as put the cap on the pen. You're like, of course, I go, it'll be in the step-by-step -step guide. Everything. Cool? Now we've done that. I'm going to step on this side. And I want to see if you can remember this. Ready? So let's do the quiz. I thought Mr. E was such a little... What? Such a little what? That's right. Booty, two shoes. Now, sometimes we add a little thing and we put goody little two shoes, but I already put this here, right? Goody little two shoes, I already put it there. But sometimes people say, you goody little two shoes. Right? So if you don't say it at the beginning, you could add it here. So he was a little goody two-shoes. Next. However, he really something me at the, in, at the meeting yesterday. That's right. Laced into, remember? When we said attack, someone laced into you, they attack you, okay? So he really laced into me at the meeting yesterday. What about this one? He told everyone that I wasn't the... Ah, uh, that was it. Soul authority. Yeah, he said, you're not the only one who knows. Someone else knows too. Okay. On chocolate. He said, Ronnie, of all people. If you don't know who Ronnie is, go check out Ingvid. She's there. It's really good. Ronnie knew more about chocolate and was a... Uh, You can do it. Did you say shoe in? Smart, but careful. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You knew you were just waiting for that, weren't you? You thought, I oh, don't know. 
Okay, good on you. You listened to the story. You remember Shoe in from the horse race. Smart. Now, how about this one? Damn that, Ronnie. Now she is my new... What? What would Ronnie be? Now, there's a few words we could say. Nemesis, villain, but I'm going to say this. Right? Like villain. It means my enemy, but arch enemy meaning first. Good on you. That's one, two, three, four, five. And I know you're going to go back to the website and check out the quiz can you can do. But before you do that, I'd like you to do one thing. It's always good to get practice. A test is good. I give you a quiz here. That's twice or two things. I want you to do one more thing to help you learn a little bit faster. All right? Because the best way to learn is to use and use in a way that helps you learn. I want you to do some homework. And the homework I have for you here is I want you to get a shoe. Okay. Point out the parts that I talked about. See if you can remember what they're called and try to remember at least one thing I told you about that shoe. Are you the sole provider? I don't know. Sole authority. Arch nemesis. Are you a monarch? What about heel? Are you going to be wearing heels tonight? And was that punch laced or wasn't it? See, I can do it. You can, but it's not as much fun doing it by yourself. When you're done, go to the website, go to Ingvid, check out what other people have done, right? Maybe they can teach you something or you can help them as well. Because once again, we are a community and sharing, helping is sharing and sharing is helping, right? Anyway, thanks a lot. I need you to subscribe. So look around here, somewhere around here. If you could press that subscribe button, that way you can get all the information, the latest videos from myself and my other colleagues who are wonderful right in your mailbox. So you can sit down, open it up, get what you need to learn. Anyway, have a good one. It's been fun. Ciao.